So Pete Buttigieg is perhaps the big breakout star, quote-unquote, of the primaries thus far. When you thought about it going in, you would say that people like Bernie Sanders, maybe Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, maybe someone like Kamala Harris, those would be your front runners. And for the most part, a lot of those people, especially Bernie, Biden continues to poll well, so does Harris. But if everyone thought there would be a breakout star, they thought it would be Beto O'Rourke. And yet Pete Buttigieg seems to be having a lot of momentum. But this is perhaps troubling in some ways, because there's not a lot of substance there, at least thus far. We know he's highly intelligent. We know that he's an up-and-comer. I think it's fair to say that he has the potential to be, you know, a, a top-flight politician. But we don't really know a whole lot about, about Buttigieg at this stage. I think it needs to be said that having an openly gay ca- candidate for president is important, even in and of itself. I know not everyone agrees that, you know, identity is an important way to measure a president's, uh, you know, validity, a presidential candidate's validity. But in my, in my view, it is fair to note that when you have people from diverse backgrounds running, you do get different perspectives. I don't want to discount that. But I do find it rather interesting that Buttigieg has been thrust so heavily into the spotlight, despite having such a minimal profile and a minimal record. And frankly, like we have a minimal sense of his ideological leanings. Those are important questions to ask. But every once in a while, the uh, mask comes off. And I think Buttigieg is rather a conservative character. And he's very invested in the status quo. And I think that in, in the recent days, it's really been troubling how he's, for lack of a better term, slandered, if not Bernie Sanders himself, then certainly Bernie Sanders' supporters, when he's tried to make the comparison, even in an, in an indirect sense, to Donald Trump. He's tried to make the argument that um, Bernie Sanders supporters and Donald Trump supporters have a similar worldview or similar motivations, and I find that really troubling. So here's a quote from, from, from Buttigieg just recently that he gave uh, to some young, young Democrats. I think the sense of anger and dissatisfaction that comes from seeing the numbers are fine, like unemployment's low, like all that. Like you said, GDP is growing, and yet a lot of neighborhoods and families are living like this. Recovery never even happened. They're stuck. It just kind of turns you against the system in general, and then you're more likely to want to vote to blow up the system, which could lead you to somebody like Bernie, and it could lead you to somebody like Trump. That's how we got where we are. So, you know, not everything Buttigieg says there is wrong. That's actually a perceptive point that the macroeconomic metrics don't tell the full story, especially from a political and a social and cultural perspective. This was the trap that the Hillary Clinton campaign got into in 2016. In the raw economic metrics on a national level, Obama could point to a lot of positives, generally healthy stock market, generally low unemployment rates, you know, etc., etc., etc. But a lot of that is being buoyed by certain communities in certain states. And a lot of communities, especially in some key swing states that just so happened to go to Trump, were struggling. So you could say that aggregate GDP is higher, or you could say that incomes are rising, or you could say that unemployment is lower, you could say that companies are doing well, and you could have Michelle Obama saying America was never not great, etc. But the reality is, is that for a lot of people in places like Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan and in other states, of course, um, they're really struggling. Entire communities are struggling. Entire classes of people within those states are struggling. And the raw numbers don't show that. And whether you think the Electoral College is fair or not, it's not. It's not fair. But it's the game we have whether you think it's fair or not, the Electoral College map does not capture the rosy economic picture that the popular vote map does. All the happy Californians and New Yorkers voting for the Democrats, they don't outweigh the fact that you need to win so many states and so many, to add up to so many Electoral College votes. So Buttigieg is making a great point there. And he's, and he's not wrong in noting that some of Trump's votes came from economic dissatisfaction, but it's kind of disingenuous to kind of tie this idea that Bernie supporters and Trump supporters are motivated by the same factors. 
Bernie supporters and Trump supporters are actually very different in terms of their demographics. Bernie supporters are actually quite young. Trump supporters are generally older. Trump supporters, despite this rhetoric of economic anxiety, you know, during the, the general election, were, were much wealthier than Clinton supporters on average. Now, it's true to note that Trump did better uh, his, than, than recent Republicans did among lower and lower middle income voters. That's true. But he still lost those voters. He still lost those voters to Clinton if we look at many of the exit polls that we see, that we saw at the time. Whereas Bernie, again, does very well amongst low-income people, and he does very well amongst the young people. He does very well amongst people who are going to university. It's a different demographic than Trump. And what's really, I guess, kind of disheartening about Buttigieg's statement here is that he, he has a good perception of, of why people are angry and why that anger is supposedly in discordance with the data. But then he gets in trouble in saying that, you know, both Bernie and Trump, and eh, they both just want to blow up the system. And he's saying there's a danger in that. But Buttigieg is wrong. The whole point is that the system is not designed to actually reflect the status of people and reflect the needs of people and the desires of people. It's, des it's designed to reflect the status and desires and needs of, you know, an economic system. You know, when you talk about stock prices or GDP or things like that, these things can in certain instances indicate a quality of life or a standard of living, but they don't have to, especially in a large and economically you know, diverse country and socially diverse country like the United States. You know, that's just a reality. But Bernie doesn't want to just blow up the system. Bernie wants to transform the system. He wants to add elements of economic democracy to America's political democracy. He wants to make real the promise of economic opportunity and equality of opportunity. He wants to take what the founding fathers supposedly believed in, that all men were created equal, that all people are equal before the law, and actually make that real by fighting for things like basic health care and education. Because how equal is your society, even in opportunity, even in the sense of opportunity, if you can't get an education, and if you can't see a doctor. Even those things alone don't solve inequality of opportunity, let's be real. Free college and free medicine, those won't solve the fact that the rich start on third base while the poor and middle class, you know, uh, have a much more to do just to, just to reach half the result. It won't solve it, but it'll mitigate it. It gets us closer to the ideal of equality of opportunity. Bernie wants to build a just society. But here's the thing. If what Trump wanted to supposedly blow up was very different. Trump wanted to blow up these institutions that fought for limited forms of equality. But most crucially, we can see that Trump really didn't blow much up at all. Many of the institutions are still there. The swamp is as swampy as ever. The wall's probably not going to get built. Many of the systems in place are still there. And if Trump is using his executive powers in certain ways that are different than Obama, that's notable. But fundamentally, we're within a similar system. In some cases, his policies are a continuation of Obama's. Maybe an intensification therein, but a continuation nonetheless. Trump hasn't blown anything up. It's the same old system that has protected the elite at the expense of the many. And this isn't to say that Trump's xenophobic and racist and homophobic policies haven't hurt people in real ways. But it is to say that those are, sad to say, not too far out of the realm of America's political possibility. They're an extension of it. They're not a break from it. So Buttigieg is, is, is again, he's right in a sense. People are mad because the economic story of the United States told by central data does not reflect the will and the reality of most people. But he's wrong in trying to make this connection. And I know what a lot of people have said to counter this is saying, well, look, he's not comparing Bernie to Trump. He's not comparing you know, Sanders and Trump. He's comparing their supporters and the supporters' motivations. And again, I, th I, I get that. 
but it does seem to, you know, if you read the second part of this quote, again, he seems to hint like, well, the reason these supporters feel this way is why we get somebody like Trump or we'll get someone like Bernie. And it's sort of trying to do what a lot of neoliberal centrists have been attempting, really since Trump's victory, which was to kind of take this broad term like populism or, you know, or, or like populism trying to make it so that that term encompasses both what Trump has done and promised to do and what Bernie has promised to do and said, these things are bad and they're both, you know, outside the realm of what respectable politics should be. Populism is bad. But there's a difference between a left-wing populism that says, look, there's a wisdom in the people that economic equality is important, that democracy matters not just when it's at the ballot box every two or four or six years, but actually when we, we talk about bringing democracy into our workplaces and into the wider economy. There's a difference between that and, hey, let's all grab pitchforks and tiki torches and say the Jews will not replace us. There's a fundamental difference there. So when you compare left-wing economic populism to a kind of right-wing xenophobic populism, you're being disingenuous when you connect those two things. You really are. And so Budicic here is trying to draw that line yet giving him enough slack to deny it plausibly. And that's the kind of pernicious thing here. Buttigieg wants to say, look, I'm just comparing your supporters. But what he's saying is, is that when people act like Bernie supporters or Trump supporters, we get reckless politics and we have to fight against that. We have to go for the more, you know, technocratic, centrist, sober, you know, path that Hillary Clinton tried to run on. And that other politicians, both Republicans and Democrats, had run on in the past. But the genie's out of the bottle. The genie's out of the bottle. There's no going back to that tepid old centrism. The real path now, the way to defeat Trumpism, the way to defeat this new, you know, even more cruel Republican Party, what was already a cruel party before, even crueler now, the way to defeat them is not through, you know, this concession that we can't do any better. The way to defeat them is through bold economic and social justice. Do what Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, among others, have been talking about. Taxing the rich, not just on income, but on wealth and on capital gains and on other forms of, of earnings that the, wealth, the, the, the wealthy generally you know, benefit from. The richest people, income taxes are no, are no big deal to them. The richest people... They're scared when you go after their wealth and when you go after their capital gains, their profit making. That's when you strike at their wealth. And we're hearing about that. These are things we need to have done. Budicic, I don't think will go in that direction. Frankly, though, I mean, I'm, I don't know. We, we know very little about what his ultimate ideological leanings are. I think they're going to be very tepid, very centrist. Um... And not very inspiring at all. And frankly, I don't know, other than the fact that his identity is an important factor, I don't know how he'll differentiate himself from the slew of other centrists, especially if Biden jumps in. I don't, I don't know. But what I do know is that he and other centrists still are trying to make that connection. That Bernie and his people are just like Trump and his people. And that if you hate Trump, you have to hate Bernie. But the reality is, is that if you hate Trump, there's only one antidote to it, and it's democratic socialism, democratic socialism, and it's only being offered by Bernie Sanders and, to somewhat lesser degree, uh, Elizabeth Warren, who I think is running a respectable, a respectable campaign, and frankly isn't getting the attention she should be given, you know, the depth and breadth of her policy. But Pete Buttigieg doesn't have the answer, not 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 for a second. When you start making these comparisons, when you say Trump and Bernie just want to blow up the system and don't go into the nitty gritty about what they're trying to blow up, you're being disingenuous. You're trying to mislead people. So, Mayor Pete, I hope that we see more in terms of concrete policy. I admire you for your courage in running uh, as one of the first openly gay major presidential candidates. I hope that your run inspires GLBTQ folks going forward to do the same thing. It, it, it's time to, that we see eventually a gay president. 
But the reality is, is that if you're not willing to show leadership here, and if you're not willing to be genuine about what the root causes of America's illnesses are right now, which is fundamentally economic and social and environmental injustice, then, you, then, you're, then you're placing the race as pointless. And voters will see that. 